Hello, so my name's Michael Keneally and this is the part one video and blog of a five-part video blog series all about your nodal return. The title of this part one is Your Nodal Return is a Crucial Journey. Your nodal returns when the nodes of the moon in the heavens transit across where the nodes of the moon were at the moment you were born and your nodal return occurs every 18 and a half years. Now when you arrive at the start of your nodal return time you must make your understanding live. You must be authentic you must go deep. As the nodal return period develops, it can feel like you're going mad at times. It can be very disorientating at times. It will be the opening of the door into the unknown. And the central theme of this part one out of five videos and blogs is that you need to realise that your nodal return period needs to be handled like the fool's journey in the tarot. And you need to realise that at the end of that journey is the new you. So as I said, the nodal return period is when the nodes of the moon in the heavens transit across the nodes of the moon in your birth chart. There's two of them. K2, the south node, holds within it the record of your fates and karmas of your past lives, of your ancestry and of your actions in the past in this life. In fact, K2 is where we come into at the start of this life. Now, Rahu, the north node, is always opposite, right across the chart from K2. And Rahu epitomises your fate and destiny direction that you work towards in this life, your karmic direction, your destination at this time. So we each of us <coughs> incarnate to experience K to the South Node. And we're each of us thrown across our chart to what and where Rahu the North Node is. A destination to be understood, to be purified and to be realised. Now, at this time of nodal return, if parts of what you're doing in your life are unauthentic for you, they must end now. Or you'll be ill, or you'll simply become a sort of false robot going forward type of thing. If parts of your personality or your patterns are negative, and demeaning to the true you. This nodal return time is such a good time to get a good definition of your past life scripts and identify the scripts from earlier in this life. Get a good definition of your past lives and then, where needed, leave them behind, grow out of them into a fuller, healed, empowered and more spiritually perceptive you. In fact, if you go to my Love Star Dating worldwide dating site, there's a panel of astrologers and healers who will give you readings about your nodes of the moon, your nodal return and offer wonderful past life healing and ancestral healing. Have a look at the panel. 
the karmic matter of the nodal return of each of us is actually huge. It's the key stuff of our being, of our consciousness, of our life, our fate, our destiny. Helpful and unhelpful. All those facets of past life, fate and destiny, etc. will all be activated when we are within the time scale of our nodal return. So understanding the astrology of a nodal return is big. It's not to be described by the popular shorts or ranted formula or by imposed mindset robotic remedies. You have to be prepared to do what's needed, anything that's needed. It's actually your central life purpose unfolding. How you handle your actual nodal return period will affect you for the coming 18 years ahead and further. In fact, handling of your nodal return period is crucial to the success or failure of this incarnation for us. So please hear this. At the time of your nodal return, dig da deep down into the experiences that will arise. Somehow or other, you need to find the healing and the healers that will make you healed and able and freed to express the needed, destined, new you now. You have to delve into past lives. You have to develop your awareness of your incarnational life purpose forward in this life as well. And it's only really by delving into ancestral and past life issues that we can be freed to express our true destiny path forward now at this time. And that's why we're here. We're here to go through this process, develop needed new perception, heal and succeed. It's so helpful to know the details of your nodal return and it's like the fool's journey in the tarot as I said but before I go into telling you about the fool's journey in the tarot parallel I just would like to ask you to realize how disorientating our period of nodal return can be it can be like feeling we're going mad at times. Areas of our sense of ourself and our sense of what our life is about get cut away by the cutting energy of K2, the South Node. How we feel past experiences that have become embedded in our DNA, in our karmic record, in our Akashic record, all surfaces now. What can happen when your past life wounds will surface to be healed? What can happen when wounds from earlier in this life surface to be healed. If we go through the process, it's wonderful. It's a time of recalibration, of manifestation of you, of me, and of our fate and destiny and life purpose in this incarnation. So let's conclude this part one video by looking at the nodal return as the fool's journey in the tarot. Above all, when we draw the fool card in the tarot, it's a new journey. We have to discover the new you, 
we have to embrace your destined and needed new pathway forward. The Fool card in the Tarot represents the beginning of our new journey. It also represents like our primal self, our genuine openness to the universe and trust. So take the first step. Imagine the little boy or little girl, you, embarking on life. Imagine him or her unhampered by preconceptions. Imagine him or her as like an open little being, open in many ways to the universe providing. Not yet is he or she boxed in and imprisoned by a sort of ego personality overlay by enforced assumptions of who he or she must be and by an imposed definition of the road that must be trod. A central part of, our, of the start of our nodal return is to strip off the layers and reach again our pure state try and contact that at times, begin to see more clearly. Take the first step forwards, unfettered by carrying baggage. It can feel like stepping off the edge of a cliff. Be open to the truth of who you are becoming. Be open to the truth of who you were before. Remember now take the second step. It's the second step, although the process of the first step still runs on, of course, for all the journey. And the second step that's so important to do is establish what your abilities are. What you are actually capable of. And this is probably much more than you think or were allowed to think. The secret of the second step of the fool's journey is to realise your personal power. So important. Take the third step. The third step is to internalise your perceptions of what will be arising from your past, from your past lives, from your ancestry. This third step is a step of knowing, a third step of sensing possibilities for dealing with your past, your past lives, your ancestry, your past from this life, and sensing other paths that may lie in the landscape ahead of you. Listen to what your inner voice is telling you at the time of your third step. Take the fourth step. So the fourth step has got to be nurturing of yourself. It's taking a step in caring for yourself and for others. Be nurturing of yourself and others. Walk your nodal return path. You don't know where it's going. You're not fully aware of all the origin experiences, but walk it in a state of empathy and compassion and interconnection. Interconnection with others. Walk with an awareness that we each of us have to wait for the right time. Walk identifying the abundance that is life. Walk in acceptance that lots of angry, mean or chaotic things can affect you as you walk forward, but walk this fourth step nevertheless with compassion and power. Now it's time to take the fifth step. When you take the fifth step, 
It's realisation of your power and authority. You need to realise that. Take the step with self-control and focus. Start to bring your plans to fruition through self-discipline. Lead and direct yourself into mindfulness. It's very different from the fool or the little kid who is step one. But getting step five right depends on starting off as the fool or the little boy or the little girl that was you or me. Now, having taken the fifth step, Take the sixth step. This involves consciously embodying balance and harmony. Embody your new spiritual senses. Learn more. Walk forward on what you're now perceiving as your spiritual path. Know that no spiritual teachings are unflawed. And know that nothing will come to you without effort. But draw on teachings and make efforts. And then we come to the seventh step. Take the step of cherishing relationship and balance in your life now. Where you're walking forward now. Take a step of choice about this now. Is the right choice often what you actually preferred to avoid doing and taking earlier on? In love and dignity salute he or she or what you choose now at the time of this seventh step. And here comes the eighth step, the final step I'd identify as a helpful map of understanding your nodal return period, the chariot. Now mount your chariot. It's the chariot of self, driven forward by you, with those in your life. Take direct and honest action. You are the charioteer. Your needed new path forward is ahead and it's becoming clearer to see. You see where your new path traverses a new landscape ahead. A new landscape, the details of which are emerging now at last. With strength and self-control and love. Start your chariot moving forward. So armed with the key preparatory insights of this video and blog post, please now go on to the other four parts which tell you like what is a nodal return in terms of nitty gritty facts and figures. How to interpret your nodal return astrologically how to understand the nodes where they are in the present Libra Aries sign axis and then the Virgo Pisces sign axis which the nodes move into from the 30th of October coming up at the time of filming. Get a reading from me. Go to my Star Wheel Astrology website to book a reading, the focus of which is your choice. And indeed, look at our Love Star dating panel of healers and astrologers because there's truly very useful stuff about astrology readings, about ancestral healing. My God, that's so big at this time and not easy to get into or understand. And about contacting your past lives what happened there, manifesting and affecting this life, coming to the surface at the time of your nodal return. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.